My name is Gabrielle Fedor. I'm the COO at Anchor, and I am joined here today by Claire Benway, who is joining us from the University of Minnesota Research and Training Center on Community Living, and Andre Floyd, who is our communications specialist over here at Anchor. Uh, we are really excited to be with you here today to walk you through our brand new online toolkit, uh, which will help you recruit and retain direct support professionals and other staff in your organization. This webinar is being recorded today, and it will be available for you um, as part of the toolkit. So it will serve as your tutorial should you um, forget how to do something or not have a chance to take all the notes as we walk through it today. Uh, hopefully you are all listening in through your computer speakers. Uh, if you have any issues, uh, you can go ahead and message us in the chat box, and we'll get you uh, a number to contact. Use the chat box in your lower left-hand side to ask us any questions. We'll be taking questions throughout today's call, uh, and we'll also have some ample time towards the end of the presentation to address any questions or comments as well. So with that, uh, I'm going to start our slideshow and uh, just talk about the reasoning behind putting together the toolkit with the University of Minnesota. Claire, I'm going to turn it over to you to talk a little bit about uh, the stats here on the page uh, and give a little introduction on RTC and the work that you've been doing uh, on workforce uh, as well. Great. Thanks, Gab. Uh, this is Claire Benway from the RTC of Community Living from the University of Minnesota. I'm excited to be here. Um, and really, this has been a great project. What, um, what I wanted to talk a little bit about is um, first let you know what the RTC, um, or the Research and Training Center on Community Living is. We are housed in the University of Minnesota's Institute on Community Integration, and we were first funded in um, 1976. And our focus has always been on community living for people um, who receive support. And we have done a lot of work toward the direct support workforce and development. Um, and that's really been since our inception. The RTC uh, has studied the impact of staff attitudes, um, competencies, turnover rates, um, not only its impact on organizations, but also the impact on the people who are receiving services. We, the program works to promote inclusion and full participation of people with disabilities in every aspect of their lives and in their communities that really um, focuses on their choice. So with that, that's a, a real brief history. You can go and, um, and look us up. Uh, we can add that into the resources as well. Uh, I just wanted to talk really about the cost of turnover and why this toolkit became, um, became important. And so what we know is that you know, there's 40 to 50 percent turnover, um, and that's high turnover. A lot of organizations are dealing with that on a daily basis. Uh, we see a lot of uh, people who, who come into the job, and then within the first three to six months, they've decided to leave, and we want to know why. A vacancy rates, that's, that's the rate where you just can't fill a position, are, are hover around 20 percent, and just the, the really, really high cost of what that means for um, agencies. What we also know is that it's not always about wages. We know as an industry we have some historically low wages, um, and that's due to the funding that we receive. And I know that Gabrielle will talk a little bit about it at the end. Um, and then also just the utilization of benefits and what are the, some of the, the non-monetary things that we can provide as an industry. Uh, and training and education. One of the big things that we're also going to talk about today is that idea of status and image of a direct support worker and how this toolkit can help and affect that. So we'll move on to slide four, which let me make sure. Oh, there we go. Uh, so what is in the toolkit? Um, let me hold on. I've got to pull up my notes here. What is in the toolkit is, um, is some ready-made public service announcements. Those are called PSAs. I'm sure you can all remember those. Uh, they used to be on Channel 2 a lot, and there are some really great opportunities to get a quick understanding of what someone does. There are the nationally validated direct support professional and frontline supervisor competency sets. Those um, were, were 
started an, an anchor, and the U University of Minnesota were really involved with the NADSP to get those uh, get those accessible and out for everybody. There will be cust or there are customizable target marketing flyer and job announcements. Under we'll be going through those. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the turnover calculator and the retention and wage benefits and, and a, an, electronic u, uh, an electronic tool that organizations can utilize. We're going to look at a realistic job preview. Uh, and that is basically what we're going to show people so that they understand what they're coming, what they're getting into in, a, in position. And then we're going to talk about structured behavioral interviewing and why that's important. And we'll walk you through some of the need to knows about that. So let's see, we'll go on to the next slide. And I believe that will be Gabrielle talking to you about that. So if you're looking for the toolkit, uh, the quickest way to get to it is to go to anchor.org forward slash toolkit. That hot link will take you directly to, uh, to the pages. Or if you are on the Anchor website and you click on the National Advocacy Campaign piece of it, uh, the toolkit is actually right there in the toolbar. Um, and when we say toolkit, we actually have two different toolkits. One is for potential direct support professionals, and that's the landing page folks will get to if they click on the link to any of our flyers or public service announcements. Uh, and then the second toolkit is actually for all of you. And that includes all of the materials you can use. Uh, you can share with your HR department. You can take. You can customize. So when we're talking about Toolkit, we actually have two separate landing pages right now. And this is how you get to it. This is what it will look like on the Anchor website. Again, it's on the National Advocacy Campaign component of it. Or you can just bookmark anchor.org forward slash toolkit. This is what the page looks like uh, when potential DSPs uh, get there. Uh, we have a little bit of an introduction um, talking about what a DSP is. I should note here that uh, Anchor's Communications Community of Practice has been a really essential ad hoc work group uh, and kind of sounding board as we put together the toolkit. So everything that you see on this page has been done with their feedback, with their input, um, and uh, the toolkits are really a living, breathing thing. We continue to make updates. We continue to make changes. So uh, we welcome your feedback, um, and we uh, want to be sure that we have all the tools that you need um, at your fingertips. One of the feedback um, early on that we received from our work group was that if you aren't in this industry, if you happen to see one of our flyers or one of our public service announcements, you might not really know uh, what a DSP or a direct support professional is. That might not be a term that you're familiar with. So we wanted to include some real job descriptions, which we've actually collected from some of our anchor members. And we've included those here, in addition to the public service announcements, um, and some other pieces. Our goal is to have uh, a job board dedicated to direct support professional postings here on this landing page as well. Um, so look for that in, uh, in the very near future. The public I'm service gonna... announcements, uh, I'm going to turn over to Claire to give a little bit more information around um, RTC. Uh, was critical in helping to develop this. And uh, Claire, do you want to talk about the history? Yeah. So uh, for those of you that don't, don't know exactly what a public service announcement is, this is really that initial beginning stage of recruitment. This is that, that item that's going to be out there for everyone in the public to see regardless of where they are. Uh, that's, that's a big, um, a big opportunity to get the word out as to what this industry is. It can then also be utilized in more targeted settings to really help people um, understand that this is a profession. So that brings me to a couple of the things that we looked at when creating these public service announcements is that they were created for use in many different types of organizations. We've tried to capture a range of people being supported as well as the DSPs that support them so that you can really analyze each one and decide which one is like, right for your organization. 
you can then also decide where the best place to display them is and where raising that community awareness might most benefit you and your organization. Again, like I said, celebrating the idea that a direct support professional, professional is a professional and this is a valued role in our society is extremely important. Uh, we want to we wanna make sure that we understand that, that not everyone is cut out for this work, but that everyone is touched by this work, and that's really where this, these come from as well. There's, a, there's an understanding that it's, it's, um, it's really impacting people's lives and that, that everyone has an opportunity to give something. However, it might not be the exact correct role for everyone to work um, as a direct support professional. Uh, like I said, they can be used on, in many different ways in many different uh, audiences. These particular ones can be utilized uh, for television. You can put them onto your website. You can run them on Facebook. You can, pretty much anywhere that media is played nowadays, you can, you can pop these in. I, I think that a really great opportunity for these to run on people's organizational websites or maybe even their recruitment pages these, uh, these give a great picture of what, what that job is. And then also just uh, spreading the word as to the great work that direct support professionals do because this is such a wonderful opportunity for people to support others. Uh, as you can see on the slide, uh, these can be customized. Uh, they, are, they are video clips and we can, Andre's uh, email is there for you to, to contact him. We're just working out how to make sure that these don't get uh, um, sort of run away with. We want to make sure that they stay true to form, uh, both with anchors beliefs and with your organizational beliefs as well. So let's move on. We also thought it was important to have uh, within our toolkit um, <clears throat> kind of the, the, the roadmap that, um, that many folks on the call, that anchor, that RTC, uh, work with the National Alliance of Direct Support Professionals to develop, and that's their code of ethics and their competency areas. Um, these are the latest and greatest. They were recently updated. Um, so we have direct links to those in our toolkit um, with, uh, with NADSP's uh, permission, of course. And uh, there's a little bit uh, additional information about NADSP on the toolkit as well. Now, uh, this, is, this is really one of the pieces that uh, I think I am the most uh, proud of. Uh, we've put together, uh, with the help of our communications community of practice, uh, a set, uh, we're starting with six, uh, flyers that can be downloaded and, uh, and printed. Uh, they can be saved and used. Again, you can use these in your social media. You can use these in your emails. Um, you can take these and use these however you see fit. Uh, we talked with a lot of our anchor members and asked them, what, uh, where have you been most successful in your uh, recruiting over the last few years? And some of the feedback we received was uh, we've had uh, a lot of success uh, recruiting returning veterans, uh, finishing up their military service, and wanting to stay within uh, a service environment but not quite sure where to go. Uh, we've had success with what we've been calling empty nesters, uh, folks whose uh, sons and daughters have gone off to college, who find themselves with a bit more free time. Uh, this could also encompass retirees. Uh, we're also, uh, we have some flyers specific to uh, college students. There's also one there uh, to recruit even earlier high school students, folks looking for internships, folks looking for volunteer opportunities. So we're really building on the demographic areas where, um, where some of our members have actually seen success. Um, folks new to the country uh, looking for a space to, to hone their skills and their abilities. You'll notice that there is uh, a big empty space uh, here on all of the flyers, and there was a reason for that. Um, as you can see, uh, you can leave it blank. Uh, if you do, folks will be directed to anchor.org forward slash DSP, uh, and that's that landing page that we showed you a couple of slides back. Or you can download these, and you can actually customize them for your own organizations with your own logo, 
your own contact information. You can even hyperlink directly to your own job announcement. And now I'm going to hand it over to Andre, who's going to walk us through how to do this. Um, and don't worry, you don't have to take notes. Uh, you don't have to scribble things down. We have all of the instructions here for you in the slides. And again, these slides will be available to you right there on the toolkit. Andre, turning it over to you. All right. Thank you. And yeah, so just wanted to echo what Gab said. No need to go through this. But when you see the slides, it's pretty easy uh, and, and can be done. So if you don't have a marketing or a graphics person on staff, this is kind of an easy kind of workaround to do this with minimal tools. Um, if somebody has Photoshop or some other image editor, much simpler process. But this is a way to do it for, for everybody to be able to do it. So um, the first thing to do is uh, download one of the flyers. Um, so once you click on it uh, on our website, which, uh, whichever one you want or all of them, uh, you'll be able to download them. And I have the little um, arrow pointing to the download um, option, and you just save it somewhere. Um, since we're going to be customizing these, normally you, uh, what I usually do is put them in, create a folder to put them in. Uh, since you have a couple different versions and you don't want to you know, scrounge it around for the right one. Um, but once you download it and you locate it on your computer and you open up the PDF, um, and then uh, when you go to File and you drop that menu down, button down, you'll see Save as Other. Um, that's going to allow us to save it as a Word document to make sure that we can customize it since PDFs aren't all that nice unless you have something, uh, some other kind of editor. So let's go to the next slide here. Um, the first thing you'll want to do like Gab just mentioned is anchor.org slash DSP. We're perfectly okay if you want to send people there. However, if you want to put your organization's website there, that's very easy to do. You just highlight that. It will match the color automatically if you just highlight it and type what your organization's um, link is um, in, that, in that space. Um, once you are done with that, uh, in the top row next to Home will be Insert. Uh, so you select Insert, and then um, you will want to select the first uh, t the text box and the very first one. It's a simple text box. Um, why a text box? I'll explain. Basically, Microsoft Word doesn't really believe that photos and images should belong together. They like to separate them. And um, by tricking it and telling it we're going to add text, uh, it'll allow us to add a photo later. Shh, don't tell the good people at Microsoft. Um, and let's move on to the next slide. Here we go. So, once you get the text box open, it will pop up probably somewhere in the middle of the, um, of the flyer, but you can always just move it and of course relocate it down to that empty space um, down there. It will be very easy to just drag it down. Um, and then of course adjust the size of the box um, so that it fits in that space. And once you have it lined up, uh, you highlight all of the text that's in there and go back up to the top and uh, hit the Insert tab which will allow you to insert a picture. Okay? And after that, you'll be able to select your company's logo. Um, you can, if you don't have one, um, you, it's usually easy to grab it from your website or something. But in this case, in order to be silly, I grabbed Count Chocula. Why? Well, because he brings me good, uh, <laughs> good memories um, of cereal that I can't eat anymore. Thanks to my wife. Moving on. Um, let's see. So the image will be crudely placed, as you see in Microsoft Word. Um, but that's okay because it allows you to adjust it. And the good news is it's keeping all of the text right where we want it, and it's not interfering with that even though it would if it just assumed it was, a, it was an inserted photo. So you do that to, to manipulate two things here. The text box itself, you select the outside um, black edges, and you can change the size. Um, of the text box. And if you select on your image, um, this time good old Count Chocula, you'll see um, little kind of balls pop up in the corners. And you select whatever corner you want and hold down the Alt button. Uh, what that's going to do is save the, the ratio of the size so that the logo isn't getting distorted, stretched out, or anything. 
And as long as you're holding Alt and dragging from a corner, it will keep everything the relative size that it should be until you get it kind of perfectly in that space how you want it. Um, as you can see, I made a little note as well to only move the image um, um, once your cursor looks like that directional arrow. Um, if you kind of drag it around, it will start moving the text around. So if you select the outside box and you see that little directional uh, cursor, you are good to go. Um, then you can drag it into that space and set it. Uh, and then the last step, pretty easy. It's pretty much done. Um, the only thing you will want to do is go back up to the top where it says File, and you will want to save that as a PDF. Um, those are much easier to share, to post. Um, it kind of locks the images in place um, and actually has better printing quality than just saving it as a Word document. And so I have – now you have a <laughs> DSP become a direct support professional, so says Count Chocula. And that's about it. Thank awesome. you. Oh yeah, by uh, the way, sorry about that. <laughs> Just to mention again, on, our, on the employee um, website of part of the toolkit, uh, right above the flyers you will also see my email uh, information. So if you have any questions or if this you know, process ends up being a little wonky, just email me and uh, I'll be happy to help you through it. Um, yeah, I'm always uh, available to make sure that everything gets in there because ultimately this is a tool for you all to use. So I'll be available to help. Sorry, your turn, Gab. <laughs> Thank you so much, Andre. And so we, we really wanted to, to walk you through this step by step because we know not everyone has, uh, as Andre mentioned, a marketing department on hand or a graphics designer that you have on call. So we really uh, just wanted to make this as simple as possible but still give you something that looks professional uh, that you were able to customize and use. And um, so. We hope uh, that this helps, uh, but again, always reach out to us if you need a hand or, or, or help putting it together. The other components that we've added to the uh, employee space of, of the toolkit are materials that, uh, that RTC has developed, uh, the interview questionnaire, behavioral interviewing, and structured interview questions. Uh, some of these uh, have been around for a while, but Claire has really done a nice job and, and added some, uh, some value-added pieces to them uh, to help you use them in, in even an easier way. So Claire, turning it back to you to, to walk us through these pieces. Great. Thank you. So these are the three uh, uh, thumbnails that you'll see on the website. And I'm going to walk you through each one of them. These are really important as far as the recruitment because once they have seen the PSA and they've come in and they've watched the, the realistic job preview and they, the flyers have caught their eye, you really have to actually talk to them and understand if they are the right person for you and for your organization. So the first one um, that I would like to talk about here – hold on a sec, let me make sure I advance – there we go um, – is, is the um, – the interview questionnaire. Now what this is, is it is just a blank template. If you have one of these in your organization, you don't have to use this one, but if you don't have one, here it is for you. And what this is, is that you can pull questions into this template, and then you have basically a standard professional guide for the questions you're going to ask for a specific uh, position or for a specific role. So that's what this interview questionnaire is. It is a blank template for you to utilize. On the top, I'm going to use the, the arrow here. On the top, you, you have a space for the applicant's name, the date, and then their contact information. What you're going to want to make sure that you're looking at is, is that this is the correct um, question for this particular, for this particular um, position. So let's go to the next. Slide. I think it's okay. There we go. And then this is your um, structured interview questions. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with structured interview questions, there are kind of some rules around it. There's a lot of uh, research out there. You can just Google it, and you'll find some uh, about what a structured interview question is and why it's important. The specific structured interview questions that are in your toolkit were developed by the um, RTC in conjunction with 
with other partners looking specifically at the direct support professional role. So these are not just um, structured interview questions pulled off of the Internet. They pertain directly to this industry. Uh, the most important thing that you want to remember as you're reading through this, these questions is that, one, you're not going to take any more than 10 to 12 of them. You would never ask an individual all of the questions that are in, the, in this particular guide, but you're going to want to look specifically at what is the position that they're applying for and what questions are going to guide you to, to learn what you want to about that particular applicant. So all candidates for a single job should all be asked the same initial questions. Those questions can then lead you to some follow-up questions that might be individualized to the specific person, but you really want to make sure that you can um, that you can distinguish whether or not this where they fit on a scale. Um, and so you, that's and that's basically what you're looking for is, is um, you're going to set that scale up and understand like, gee, you know, this candidate didn't score or score as well as the other one. It's going to help you make those choices. If you're doing mass interviews. Uh, for an organization, if you're doing, uh, I would say, you know, like a job fair, you're going to want to pick questions out of this that reflect your organizational beliefs and your mission, vision, values. Um, and I, I'm sure that you'll be able to find those. Again, then those would be used as sort of that initial screening questions that you would then maybe, if you're going to send someone to uh, a specific department, have, have more structured interview questions that relate to that particular position. What we know about structured interview questions um, as we ask candidates is that the best predictor of future behavior is a person's past behavior. So all of these are set up to say, you know, how have you reacted? Um, what did you do? Not give me a theoretical example. So it's really that idea of that situation and then the, the actions of the person and what were the outcomes. Those are very, very important. Sorry, my computer slow. If we could go to the next slide. Thanks. Sure. <laughs> um, so again, this sets up, um, this is your quick guide. So once you kind of look through the, the interview questions, and you're kind of going, how do, I, how do I present this interview? That's what this behavioral interviewing uh, user's quick guide will do for you. Right? It's got a lot of what I just said in there, uh, in a lot more in depth. So this is just basically for you to go, why am I doing what I'm doing? So it's going to tell you about the same set of questions, how to distinguish excellent performers or poor performers, describe experiences, and what you as an interviewer need to know in that process. So I encourage you all to look at that, whether or not you're going to use the actual interview questions provided in the toolkit or you've got other ones, this is a great guide to look through to be sure that, that you're doing some best practice within your organization. Oops, let me go back one. Sorry. Yep. That's okay. They Sorry. caught up finally. <laughs> Oops. Oh. I won't Can touch it. How's that? Sorry. Yes, okay. please. All right. How about that? Okay. And here's the reason. So as we talk about all of this information, the structural interviews, the PSAs, what is the big deal? And the big deal really does come down to cost and the cost per hire. So it's about how are you sustaining quality because the people that you're supporting deserve that. That's, they're paying for that. It's important. And if your organization has to spend, you know, in, well, in 2005, as we see in the slide, it was $3,000. Uh, and then in 2011, it was, it's gone all the way up to $6,000. And those are from a very large uh, human service organization called Lutheran Social Service. Those are their numbers. They helped us with this initial study. Um, it's a big deal, and how much your organization can do with the money that they'll save based upon these, these hiring practices. And not to mention the, the supervisor's time, for those of you who have been frontline supervisors and you spend probably even higher now, 18% of your time with new employees when a turnover rate is 50% or higher. Um, so that's, that's pretty significant time. That's a big deal, and we want to make sure that we can, can – uh, can start to combat that and bring those numbers down. Can you go to the next slide, please? Sure. So 
We're going to talk a little bit about the realistic job preview, which we don't have for you today. We're doing some, some, some cool stuff with it. It's going to have um, uh, a special guest star in the, at the beginning. Barbara Amara will be, will be in it. She's, I think, filming that almost as we speak, maybe, and as well as a couple parts to it. If you're unfamiliar with what a realistic job preview is, is it is these four things. Right? It's honest and accurate and credible. This is not a sugar-coated um, explanation of a position that doesn't actually exist. Right? There's a balance of positive and negative things. Uh, people can understand what the job is. They understand what they're getting into. And it includes a DSP perspective. Um, the RGP that, that is being created for Anchor is almost completely from the direct support professional's perspective as that's the person that it's targeted toward. And in that perspective, they're describing actual experiences that they have and what that brings to them. So it's really important that these four things are, are, um, are present and, and that that's really the, the philosophy behind all realistic job previews. Because we all know we've seen things where you watch a video and you go, that is not what that job is. Uh, and then you get employee dissatisfaction. And that's really when those people are leaving in that first three to six months. Because they are doing a job they did not understand was what the job was. Next slide, please. Uh, sure. Um, oh, and before, let me just jump in and uh, and note that um, this is something that that members of our um, communications uh, community of practice have have previewed in a couple of different iterations as we've been working on it. And and based on their feedback, uh, as Claire mentioned, uh, we have gone back to the drawing board a couple of times uh, to make it more realistic. Uh, we heard uh, from our members. Um, that some folks use a realistic job preview or some version of it at different phases in their hiring process. Some folks uh, want to show folks something very preliminary before they even get into a structured uh, interview situation. Others want to wait until maybe the, the first or the second interview to say, okay, now this is what we're really talking about. So we're actually restructuring the realistic job preview uh, to have uh, to kind of be a two-in-one. There will be a small snippet in the beginning that you can use as a preview, and then it will dive a little bit deeper uh, into the detailed description. Um, and again, um, Claire is going to explain why a realistic job preview is, is so important. Uh, and we know folks that are eagerly awaiting this, uh, but we want to just assure you uh, it's coming soon. Uh, but we want to make sure that it's the best possible product uh, before we put it on the website. Thanks. Yes. Um, so as you see on the screen now, these are, I don't think a lot of people require convincing, especially when something's available to you. Uh, again, like we said, this is going to be available at a nominal cost, and there will be an, an opportunity for some organizations um, to, to add on a little bit more if they would like to customize that RJP. Again, that would be something that would be worked out separately because we do have to protect the, the, um, the rights of the people that are in the, in the video. So why using RJPs? Uh, what we know about RJPs is that they do improve retention rates between 9 and 17%. That's a huge deal. If you figure that you've got 50% you know, uh, turnover rate or retention rate, uh, to reduce them by any amount is going to be great, but to get up to 17% would be phenomenal, especially understanding that those are going to continue um, to those numbers will continue to decrease as far as decreasing your your uh, percentages, so that your your overall employee satisfaction will hopefully then increase as well. So, 12% um, on on average for agencies with annual retention rates of 50%, and 24% for agencies with annual retention rates of 20%. Those are some significant numbers, and if you want to do the math this morning, um, or I guess afternoon now, uh, about that $6,000 number and what that meant, means for savings within your organization, it's a pretty significant chunk. Uh, and I'm going to move forward to the next slide and talk about how you can figure that all out um, with this retention calculator. This is a tool that is available on not only the um, University of Minnesota's website, but also on Anchor's website. It's been out there for, for quite some time in a couple of different forms. Uh, and we really um, think it's important for states and organizations to know and understand this. So this is 
this is for you to use. Please, please go explore it. It's a little, um, it's a little heavy, but if you are not using these things now uh, and these understanding your retention and recruitment rates, then, then you're going to be kind of square one. So what this does is it gives you an understanding of, of who's in your organization, right? So those stayers, those leavers, um, you're going to basically find your, what's called the minimum data set. You're going to look at your separation rates, that's your turnover, and you can break it down by, by site, by program types, even into by supervisor. This will tell you how to set that program up and what you're going to need to understand so that you can start to understand what your, um, re your retention rate is. So what is your turnover rate? Because if you don't know what it is now, you can't measure success. And then you also don't know what intervention strategies you should utilize. So um, pretty, pretty phenomenal opportunities here. Uh, it can help with, with, with what of our recruitment toolkit uh, items you're going to most heavily focus on. And then we'll also provide a baseline and for points of comparison. And then you can also use to identify places that maybe you want to grow or maybe you want to retract. So if you're doing something within your organization that is working really well but only one section of your organization is doing it, why are you not doing it somewhere else? For instance, you've got that wonderful frontline supervisor that has fantastic recruitment and retention rates. What are they doing that is different from everybody else and how can you make that, um, make that permeate through your organization? So pretty, pretty important. Uh, and again, like I said, figuring out your minimum data set, what are your numbers, is the place to start so that all of these tools actually can start to make an impact and difference in your organization. And I think I'm going to turn it over now to Gabrielle to talk about and more. Claire. So, so we know, uh, we are fully aware that um, that some public service announcements and some customizable flyers are not going to be uh, the magic bullet that makes everything okay uh, for your organizations. We know that workforce continues to be the number one pressing issue that's keeping our members awake at night. Um, so our goal with the toolkit is to give you um, as many of the resources that we have. Um, we're adding, uh, so you'll see and you'll continue to see uh, pieces added to the toolkit, especially on the employer page of it. Uh, a few months ago, CMS actually issued an informational bulletin to states reminding them that, uh, that staff wages and training uh, can and should be incorporated into their rate setting methodologies. So we included that informational bulletin here for you to use in your own advocacy efforts. Uh, a few years ago, CMS also put together a direct service toolkit um, giving states and state directors some direction on, on addressing the DSP crisis. Um, but we thought that might also be an important tool in your own advocacy efforts as well. We have Anchor's white paper on the minimum wage there. We are updating that. We're working on a more extensive workforce paper to share with you. That will also be a component of this. We've added a direct link to the Anchor Amplifier, which is our action center, which will allow folks uh, to find who their legislators are, send them a direct message. Uh, it'll also take you to our SOS campaign, the Save Our Services campaign, in which we are fighting to get increased funding to help us uh, work towards uh, higher wages and addressing the higher costs that will come with the overtime exemption rule and other mandates. So uh, we know that this is just one piece uh, of the puzzle, but um, it's, it's one that hopefully will give you some additional tools that you didn't have. Uh, and again, we will continue to work on this. We hope to have some Spanish language versions of some of these tools up shortly. The realistic job preview we hope to have up uh, absolutely before the end of the year. As Claire mentioned, there will be uh, a nominal fee to get to the realistic job preview, but that's just to protect the licensing and the integrity uh, of that realistic job preview. It will be scaled to the size of your organization. Um, so if you have uh, 50 employers or less, it will be, uh, I think, we're, we're looking for $100 to use it over the course of a year. 
uh, for up to 50 employees, and it will scale upwards uh, to that. There is an ability, as Claire mentioned, uh, to customize that. We can have some additional conversations about that if you'd like. Um, but again, everything on the toolkit right now is yours. It is yours to take, to use, to customize. Call us. We're happy to assist. Uh, and if you see something or if you don't see something that you would like to see there, let us know. Uh, this continues to, to, to grow, to evolve. Um, as Claire and Andre and I were talking this morning, it, this isn't just that, oh, well, we did this in 2016. Now we're going to wipe our hands and we're done. This is, a, <laughs> this is a labor of love. This is something that we're going to keep working on and keep growing. Um, so this is what we have on Anchor and RTC's uh, DSP toolkit right now. Uh, we're happy to take any questions or any comments. Uh, we do have a little bit of time, um, so you can use your chat box in the lower left-hand side uh, to send us a message. While we're waiting for any comments to come through, uh, Andre, Claire, is there anything that you uh, would like to add that, that perhaps we've forgotten to share? I think you've covered it. Can't wait to see what questions there are. <laughs> yeah, same here. I'm just uh, awaiting any questions. I think we've, uh, at least from my, my side, um, handled most of the questions that I or things I wanted to get across. So we'll just wait for questions. And again, I, I do want to mention this is recorded. Uh, this will be uh, available. Will we be receiving a copy of the recorded webinar and some printed materials? Absolutely. Okay, so someone uh, actually dialed in a little bit late. So the answer is yes. We will uh, send you a recording of today's webinar directly. Um, the printed materials you can actually uh, download from Anchor's website. Uh, again, just go to anchor.org forward slash toolkit, and that's going to take you to all of the pieces uh, that we've talked about today. And also in the toolkit, as we mentioned, this recording we're also going to link directly onto the four employers component of the toolkit. So this can serve as your user side as well. Thanks very much for that question. Uh, another question uh, that just came through is what is the length of the RJP video? So we've broken it into, uh, we're in the process of breaking it into two parts. And I think we discussed that the first uh, initial preview part, Claire, correct me if I'm wrong, that will be about two to three minutes. And then that is correct, the, yep. deeper, the deeper dive will be about 12, 12 minutes. Is that what we were thinking? The whole thing start to finish won't be longer than 15 minutes. So okay. just depending upon where we, we make that, that sort of blank space cut for people to use in preview and then utilize after that, um, but yeah, no longer than 15 minutes. Um, it can also be a great opportunity to sort of scroll at, so it, it will be an appropriate length to scroll through at job fairs or at conferences so that you don't um, have, to, have to worry about you know, it being 45 minutes long. Great. Thanks for that question. Any other questions uh, for us today? If not, uh, please feel free to, to email uh, any of us, uh, gcedor at anchor.org, uh, Andrew Floyd, A. Floyd uh, at anchor.org. Uh, Claire, I'm sorry, we should, we should have had a contact uh, slide uh, in our mm -hmm. slides, but Claire, can you share your email as well? I can. Can I type it into the chat function? Will people be able to see that? Absolutely. There you go. Excellent. And you know what? <laughs> That's a great idea. I'm going to do that too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here's me. And there's Andre. Wonderful. All right, folks. 
thank you again for your time uh, today. Uh, we hope we hope uh, that this gives you some uh, some resources that that uh, you will find helpful. We welcome your feedback. Um, if there are other uh, demographics that you think uh, we should we should develop or we should, should create some outreach to, please let us know. Um, and we'd also love to hear uh, or see how you're using uh, the materials as well. So we will probably uh, circle back in about six months to kind of see how things are going. Um, if folks are, are able to utilize the tools, if they're finding them useful, and we will continue to grow and learn together. Thank you all for your time today. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. It was a pleasure to be here. Have a great day, everyone.